Today we have Asher Brandt again. He's a professor of biochemistry at the University of St. Joseph in Connecticut. And he has some updates on his latest project on GABA receptors, right? So yeah, take it away, Asher. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Daniel. I'm actually very fortunate to have worked on this project. I met a fellow professor in the pharmacy department at my university, and uh, we met actually the first day at worker orientation. And we had an idea. He's a GABA specialist. And he said, can you dox a molecules to GABA receptor? I have a paper that I want to publish soon. I said, sure. And six months later, we published a paper about GABA. He had a bunch of data sitting. And it was a really good opportunity for me to learn about the GABA receptor, which I knew nothing about before I started this project. So um, awesome. as we think of GABA, GABA is the main inhibitory um, neurotransmitter in the brain. So GABA is made up of these five subunits. Like, so we think about this as a quaternary protein structure. Uh, we got the blue subunit, the magenta subunit, the yellow subunit, the red subunit, and the blue subunit. And basically what happens is these are five separate proteins, quaternary protein structure, um, in between where the proteins connect. So between, let's say, the blue and this... Um, cyan, I guess we might call that color, um, protein subunit, there's a binding site. And all these binding sites on GABA occur between these joint, between these junctions where the two proteins um, connect. So for example, here's the GABA binding, here's one of the GABA binding sites, there's actually three um, on this protein. This is GABA bound to um, this is GABA bound to GABA A receptor. And what's interesting is um, GABA is one of these neuromodulators that has that can form a salt bridge, right? It has a positively charged um, amine group, and it can salt bridge with um, some type of carboxylic uh, acid group, which it does uh, between in ASP43 or the there's another one, the glycine uh, 64, it can salt bridge with these um, groups, and um, What's interesting is, although, you know, GABA binds to this receptor, so do other types of uh, antibiotics we looked at in this paper. There's a lot of antibiotics that we don't think about as binding to GABA, but in fact, they do. And GABA bind, and the binding of these antibiotics to GABA actually change um, arousal in humans, interestingly enough. Um, but basically, what we found is that a lot of these antibiotics, the smaller ones bind to the GABA binding sites, like here, and the larger ones, let's see if I can grab this. Yeah, I'll give you back the center. Thanks. There you go. Cool. And so the larger compounds that we actually docked in this paper, they don't bind to the GABA binding site because they're too big. They actually bind right here in this big hole right here. Some of them bind in this big hole right here. And there are also basically five of those binding sites. One, two, three, four, and five. And then interestingly, some, interestingly enough, some of these compounds can inhibit GABA by acting through a different way. They can actually bind to GABA inside the pore of the membrane, inside right. here, right? Kind of right. near this gearbox section. And they can inhibit the flow of ions through the membrane. Um, if we kind of think about it, um, it kind it makes sense that smaller molecules are going to bind to the GABA binding site because look how small this binding site is. It's not very big. Like I've realized yeah, maximum, yeah. max you can get into this binding site. There. Yeah, you can get you, the biggest molecules you can get inside here are about 325, 350 atomic mass units. Some of our compounds are way bigger than that. So they're either binding to GABA by binding to one of these larger sites right here or mm -hmm. they're binding to the middle the pore of the membrane down here is kind of what i noticed in this paper i see what we carried out a docking experiment here by the way with uh, some of the compounds that you were working with yeah they, they also docked they also docked where the gaba is there right yeah yeah let's look at some of those docks daniel I'm taking here my menu. I can grab just like a tablet. Very convenient. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm just going to hide the GABA for now. 
which is this one. And I'm going to show the doc, the results we got with pentylene tritazole, however you pronounce yep. that. <laughs> I think it's pentylene tetrazole, something like that. But yeah, like okay. what I was saying is interesting. For example, this molecule is tiny. This is a very small molecule. Um, and it binds the GABA binding site. That makes sense because it's also a small molecule, not as small as GABA, but it is considered to be a small molecule. And there is a bit of space for it to move around the binding site. If you think about looking at these poses, there is enough space. I mean, types of interactions we'd expect to see inside a GABA binding site. Well, there's a ton of aromatic groups, right? There's all these, this tyrosine, tyrosine. Um, you'd expect pi stacks. And you'd also expect... Um, if a molecule um, can form a salt bridge with aspartic acid, uh, it probably would, but it needs to have a positively charged nitrogen. This molecule doesn't, but it still binds to GABA at this site. Yeah. I see. Great. And then we had another different molecule here bound, which is a metronidazole. That yeah. one we also docked also with the docking plugin. And let me just show that one. There you go. This one's a little bigger. Yep. But it also gets very well snuck in there in the pocket. Oh, yeah, for sure. And this one is, I mean, I think this one is, like in my docking result, this one is close enough to uh, interact with all of these amino acids and move around in the binding pocket. You know, the most predominant types of interactions in this binding pocket are those aromatic, uh, aromatic stacking groups with um, aromatic groups because there are a lot of aromatic residues in the binding pocket of this uh, receptor. It's interesting All because, right. uh, you know, I'm, I'm always used to looking at GPCRs. As you know, that's kind of my primary target, which GPCRs, they bind inside, if you go to the steric binding pocket, like inside the receptor. This is almost like, it's not quite, it's not surface binding, but it's very close to the surface, to surface the receptor, if you think about it. It just has to go inside this little lethal right here. You kind of go inside this binding pocket. Interesting that that creates or triggers some um, also some like conformational changes as somewhere allosterically, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of in terms of GABA receptor, thinking about the um, like benzodiazepines, right? So benzos also bind to GABA, right? Uh, medications that reduce anxiety. Um, but there haven't been reported any of these binding sites that are inside the pore, at least to my knowledge, on GABA. Um, it might be interesting to try and validate one of those with receptor mutagenesis at some point. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thanks again for showing us all your recent uh, work on this new receptor that we've never covered before in Nanon, by the way. So I'm happy to cover some GABA. It's critical for our neurons right and our phys physiology so yeah very exciting as usual thanks so much again for for joining and looking forward to new updates in the future thank you daniel thank you very much Asher. thank you everyone watching see you next time bye bye